Tonight, Twitter admits millions of its users are automated. The dirty fight between Uber and Lyft. And is Apple more diverse than other large tech companies? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 149 for Tuesday, August 12th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Order great tasting, healthy snacks delivered right to your door. Forget the vending machine and get in shape with delicious treats like baked cheddar potato fries. Doesn't that sound good? To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. In a regulatory filing, Twitter says that, quote, up to approximately 8.5% of the accounts that it considers active are automatically updated without any discernible additional user-initiated action and are, quote, automatically contacting our servers for regular updates. This may also include accounts that automatically post updates to Twitter, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all of these numbers represent bots or spam accounts. This would include accounts that automatically request information from Twitter or mobile apps that aren't owned by Twitter. The company says that these and other automated accounts account for about 23 million of Twitter's 271 million monthly active users, or MAUs, at the end of June. Twitter says actual spam accounts make up less than 5% of MAUs. In other Twitter news, the company has introduced promoted video ads. It's in beta, which allows advertisers a new cost per view ad buying model, which means that the company won't get charged unless a user actually plays the video ad. This is the latest in Twitter's Amplify program, which gives brands more video tools to upload and distribute video on the social network. They can also measure the reach of their content with video analytics like completion percentages and a breakout of organic versus paid video views. A good old-fashioned mud-slinging fight is happening between two popular ride services, Uber and Lyft. So here's the deal. Earlier this week, Lyft accused Uber employees of trying to sabotage drivers that are working for Lyft and told CNN that to date, around 177 Uber employees have requested and then canceled more than 5,000 rides from Lyft drivers over the past 10 months in an effort to confuse Lyft customers and the drivers. Today, Uber responded in a statement and said, quote, Lyft's claims against Uber are baseless and simply untrue. Furthermore, Lyft's own drivers and employees, including one of Lyft's founders, have canceled 12,900 trips on Uber. But instead of providing the long list of questionable tactics that Lyft has used over the years, we are focusing on building and maintaining the best platform for both consumers and and drivers, meow. Uber also went in to say that a number of Lyft investors have recently been pushing Uber to acquire Lyft and that, quote, one of their largest shareholders recently warned that Lyft would go nuclear if we do not acquire them. The New York Times reports that the companies have held potential acquisition talks in the past, citing anonymous sources, but that those talks are not ongoing. TechCrunch is reporting that Uber plans to launch an API soon, which some anonymous sources of its own say that the API could potentially let partner developers add a request Uber button to their apps. Uber doesn't currently have a public API, although recently Recode reported that the company talked with Facebook about an integration into Facebook's Messenger app. Uber also appears as a transportation option inside Google Maps to people who've already downloaded the Uber app. Bloomberg reports that Apple suppliers have started manufacturing new iPads, according to people with knowledge of the matter, and that mass production of a full-sized iPad with a 9.7-inch screen has already begun for a fall launch, and that a new version of a 7.9-inch iPad mini is entering production to be available a little bit later by the end of the year. One source says that the output of the larger iPad may be restricted by manufacturing complications that are related to anti-reflection coating that would make the display easier to read particularly outside. That would be great. Apple's iPad business is its second business product category after iPhones. For Apple's fiscal third quarter that ended June 28th, sales of the tablet had slipped to 13.3 million units. Well, it's quite a day for anonymous sources, so let's just keep going. Reuters is reporting that Apple has been discussing how its health kit service will work with health provider providers at Mount Sinai, the Cleveland Clinic, and Johns Hopkins, as well as Allscripts, which is a competitor to electronic health records provider Epic Systems, which Apple is already working with. 
data is currently being collected by thousands of third-party healthcare software apps and medical devices. And Apple wants physicians to use this data centrally stored via HealthKit to better monitor patients between visits so that doctors can make better treatment decisions. HealthKit is expected to be bundled into software on the upcoming iPhone 6, if that's indeed what it's going to be called. And Apple has previously disclosed partnerships with Nike, Epic, and Minnesota-based Mayo Clinic. According to Good Technologies' semi-annual mobility index report that's be based on data aggregated from devices from over 5,000 customers worldwide. In the enterprise space, Apple's iOS dropped 5% to 67% of the market, or about two-thirds, of total device activations in the second quarter of 2014, while Android device activations increased 5% to 32% of total activations last quarter. In third place, Windows Phone activations stayed flat at 1%. If you're wondering where BlackBerry is in all of this, good technology doesn't have numbers for BlackBerry handset activations. So it's sort of a three-horse race. The total number of enterprise app activations increased 20% quarter over quarter. At its upcoming product event next month, Samsung will be showing off its rumored virtual reality headset, The Verge is reporting. This is the same event where the company is expected to announce the Galaxy Note 4. The headset, which is codenamed Project Moonlight, is reportedly a box with lenses that can turn a smartphone display into an immersive world, kind of similar to what Google showed off recently at I.O. Oculus, which uses a Note 3 display in some of its VR headsets, has previously also been linked in this project. Project Moonlight looks to have a focus dial, possibly a USB, micro USB connection to the phone. The event is set for September 3rd and will be held in both New York and at the IFA trade show in Berlin, Germany. On the console front, Sony has announced at GamesCon 2014 in Cologne, Germany, that it has now sold 10 million PlayStation 4 consoles worldwide. Although Microsoft hasn't announced sales figures for its Xbox console in quite a while, Sony's latest financial report claims that PlayStation consoles, which include both the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, outsold Xbox consoles, which include the Xbox 360 and Xbox One, by 3 to 1 in the first quarter of this year. For its part, Microsoft said earlier this year that Xbox One sales more than doubled in the United States through June. The company had shipped 5 million consoles to retailers, but that's retailers, not actual consumers, as of April 17th, 2014. Coming up, a very disastrous contest that a company asked women to participate in. It's going to be good. And in just a few, I'll talk with Selena Larson from Read Write about Apple's just released diversity report. But first, let's talk about food. What is it? 4.41 p.m. Pacific. I'm hungry. Everybody loves to snack. We're doing more of it these days. That's why you should try Nature Box so that you can snack and not feel tremendous guilt associated with snacking. Nature Box don't, uh, snacks don't have any trans fats, zero high fructose corn syrup, nothing artificial. Nature Box sends great tasting snacks to your door or your office or really wherever you'd like with free shipping anywhere in the U.S. You just click on the continue button at naturebox.com. You choose between three subscription options, whatever makes the most sense for you, and then you place your order. You can also select what kind of snacks you want in each monthly box. Dietary needs are all represented. You can snack guilt-free with honey Dijon pretzels, blueberry nom noms. I know that sounds silly, but man, they are really good. They have over 100 healthy snacks. If you're gluten conscious, they will take care of you. If you like savory versus sweet, they can take care of you. To get 50% off your first box, go to naturebox.com slash twit. And thanks so much to Naturebox for their support of Tech News Tonight. All right, joining us now is Selena Larson, staff writer at Read Write. Hello, Selena. Hey, how's it going, Sarah? Hey, it's going well. You know, you're usually here on Fridays when Jason Howell hosts the show, so I'm glad I caught you. Yeah, me too. Speaking of Jason, the last time uh, you were on the show, uh, you and Jason discussed diversity in tech, in the tech workplace. Today, mm -hmm. you actually uh, published an article uh, titled, Tim Cook Takes a Diverse Stance, Apple's Gay and Disabled Employees Matter Too. So, yes. you know, I guess the, 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 the question for you is, is Apple somehow more diverse than other tech companies or are they just being more forthcoming? So they are being a little bit more forthcoming. Uh, their actual diversity numbers as far as gender and race go are pretty similar across the board to a lot of these other tech companies. Um, 
And but what really stood out to me when uh, when Apple released the diversity data was it was accompanied by a letter from Tim Cook who called out not just the diversity needs to improve, but that also people with disabilities, um, people from the LGBT community, as well as people who are veterans, um, those are also all diverse. Uh, diverse qualities that people can have that Tim Cook really supports. And uh, one of the things that he called out was one of the uh, disabled members at uh, a New York shop, and she has a medical con- condition that prevents her from being able to see or hear properly. And he says that she they get uh, notes about her all the time, and uh, her seeing eye dog uh, play on the iPod um, <laughs> is one of the <laughs> one of the guest favorites. Um, so he really kind of showed that it's not just um, the diversity, which is 55% white in the United States and 70% male overall, which again is pretty standard. Um, but also these other uh, diverse uh, diversity efforts matter too. It seems like diversity reports are all the rage. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, they all tend to sort of look like the same numbers over and over, uh, yes. you, you know, with, with, with some fudging, I guess, depending on which company you're talking about. What do you think Apple is going for here? Obviously, it's it, you, nobody's going to disagree that their diversity is a good thing, and obviously, minorities, uh, people with disabilities, all of that factors in. Is this, you know, a PR move, or is this something that is going to change the industry in some way, in your opinion? So Apple had to do it. They were one of the big companies that hadn't yet. Google obviously kicked it off, followed by Facebook, LinkedIn, Yahoo, and a number of small companies have also released their own diversity data. So it's really time for Apple to do so as well. Uh, I think, at least I hope that this ultimately makes a difference, but it was time for Apple to really say something. And it's also important to note that Apple included their retailers. So anytime you go to an Apple store, you talk to one of the geniuses at the Genius Bar, um, these people are also included as well, which is a little bit different from Facebook and Google who don't have that um, that retail component. Mm. Um, and I know that, you know, anytime that I go to uh, one of these Genius Bars, they're like a pretty diverse group. Uh, of, of folks there, they awful, often skew, skew young. Um, college students tend to tend to work at Apple, but um, but hopefully, I think the ultimate goal, at least what all these companies are saying, what people in the industry are hoping, is that being transparent about this data and about this information can really affect change. You know, Sheryl Sandberg, uh, who is the COO of Facebook, said in a recent interview with USA Today that nothing's really going to change. Of course, Sandberg, very famous for her lean-in policy for women, uh, until, quote, we fix our education system and until after we fix the stereotypes about women and minorities in math and science. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think diversity reports are going to do down the line? It, it, there, there's, there's certainly uh, no harm in us all having a little bit more information about how the enterprise is set up, but what's next? You know, you've got people at the top who who say these things and it's coming from a good place, but does it change anything? Along with the diversity numbers, a lot of the companies have released information that they have given back to uh, different organizations. A lot of them have given it back to women in tech uh, programs. A lot of them give back to schools. So they are in their own way promoting these initiatives and promoting this education. I think what ultimately needs to happen though is like what Sheryl Sandberg mentioned in that interview was that it's an education thing. And Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is the number of CS grads that have been women has actually declined significantly in the last 20 or so years. So we're not really sure what's really behind that, but I think in order for more women to be in the tech pipeline and become tech workers, there needs to be a shift in education. And I think a lot of these large companies, small companies too, there are a ton of startups out there that are really working to support uh, women and minorities in tech education and STEM fields. So I think ultimately there has to be a a whole sea change. It's not going to just happen. They're not going to just be more women in tech. Um, I think that there needs to be an increased focus and hopefully by releasing this diversity data, it's really coming from the top and saying, look, we're taking this seriously. And hopefully a lot of this can trickle down into um, into education or into even like elementary education, just getting young girls interested in tech. Selena Larson is a staff writer over at Read Write. Thanks so much for being here on TN2 and let folks know where they can keep up with your work. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Uh, you can find me obviously on readwrite.com and I met Selena Larson if you ever want to chat. Excellent. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Finally, we mentioned this really weird contest. So let me attempt to explain what happened. Finally, 
It's a sort of a social media disaster. A company called OnePlus, which uh, you might know them as makers of the OnePlus One Android phone, got a lot of attention for a contest they decided to run recently called Ladies First. It's kind of an interesting segue from our interview. In the contest rules, OnePlus claims that chivalry is not dead, and they're giving the lovely ladies of OnePlus an opportunity to post pictures of themselves with the OnePlus logo. Then the community was supposed to vote in a popularity contest on, you know, which photo is the best. Also part of the contest, the line, ladies, no nudity, please. Obviously, that got some feathers ruffled. OnePlus has since completely deleted the ladies first contest from their forums and probably will word things differently in the future. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Ending on a good note. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today. It's tomorrow and weekdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.